I'm gonna try to mill this out of this part. It's an eight to one diameter to length ratio on its stick out. Let's see how that goes. Wow, okay, that definitely won't work at all. Let's try cleaning up that chatter by doing the part in sections. Well, dang it, that's not gonna work either. But because of the way this machine works, I actually think I have one idea that might save me here. So let's hop into SolidWorks here and look at my solution to this problem. So my thought to make this work better is to design a steady rest. So my turret can mill this whole part in one section. I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that this machine has two collinear axes. It has X1 and X2, which are aligned with each other. So I can put something in my main gang to support the part while the turret does the milling. And that's exactly what I designed up here. So the tools that go on my main gang are 5 8 and luckily we have some aluminum plate here that's 5 8 in thickness. So that's what I designed this part around. The first thing I'm gonna do is just throw this in our DN Solutions BVM, and I ran a brush over it to make it look as good as possible and get rid of any high spots. It kind of deburs everything for you and makes it look really, really good. For machining it in solid cam, honestly, it was pretty simple. We don't really need to go into too much detail on how I did it. It only required two tools. I used a half inch end mill and a 60 degree keyway cutter to put the shape in there that'll hold the part. And the final operation I did was my cutoff on the mill. Basically, all I did here was just step down slowly and make it so all I'd have is a 30 thousandths tab left so I could just rip the part off the stock. And then I just deburred all the edges. In my opinion, when you're doing one-off parts like this, it is a lot simpler just to deburr everything by hand on a bench grinder. We got our part machined and completely deburred. So now, let's throw it in the Swiss Deco and get it set up. So to get this set up the way I want, I let the machine run the part of the program that does this diameter right here. That way I have the exact spot I'm gonna be setting my tool to. So now I can call it up an MDI and then slide my tool up to that position. So let's do that. All right, so let's go into MDI. And if we go to our operations right here, it's kind of a cool little thing. You can write your own custom operations. And one of the ones I wrote is fixing tools. So I can go into here and I could say tool 133 and hit okay. And this will actually auto populate a program that I wrote before. And this is nice because what this little sub program does that I wrote, it calls up the tool, it goes to Y is zero and it goes to whatever diameter I specify. So if I run that, you can see that we went to position point 430 which is roughly what the diameter is that I machined the part to. So now when I go to 0.430 in my program, I know I'm gonna be barely resting against the material. So in order to push against it, all I have to do is go a little bit further. All right, to make sure I set this as straight as possible, I'm gonna push this in and up so it's against all the surfaces that it's gonna be resting against when I tighten it down. So we'll put our block in, we'll push it up, make sure it's nice and flat, and we'll push it to the part. So I slid the steady rest to my part. We're about to see how good this works. Kind of doing this one live on the camera, so yeah, not sure how this is gonna go, but let's find out. Spindle's on, this B-axis should go up. All right. Oh, wow. Man, that sounds really good. This should look a lot better. So one thing to note here too, is you can see, I set my tool to X of 0.430 and I'm feeding to X of 0.420. So there's about a 5,000, like a, a push you could say, against that part. You can't just touch it. You almost have to put a little bit of force into it. And sometimes you have to go further. Sometimes you have to, you know, not put too much pressure on it. Every single job changes. So that's how I did it on this one. All right, it's coming back. All right, let's stop everything. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, that's absolutely perfect. All right, let's cut it off and take a closer look. And it drops, but it's okay. I'm a trained professional at cutting things off and dropping them in oil. Mmm, I know blazer oil when I smell it. All right, so that worked pretty well, I gotta say. You know, we started out, we tried it in one pass, didn't work whatsoever. Tried it in two passes, still wasn't quite there. And making ourselves a steady rest really enabled us to do this perfectly in one pass. So sometimes, you know, in machines like this, you got to use what you got, right? We have two collinear x-axes that makes it super simple to do things like this. So it's kind of another reason why I love the Swiss Deco. It has so many different options and features on it. You can kind of think outside the box and do stuff like this. But 
this is not the end of the video. There's one more thing I want to show you over at my computer. All right, so back at my desk, I want to show you guys something that I thought was pretty cool. I wrote my own post in solid cam to run the BVM. All the machining you saw in the BVM was ran through this post. Now, if you buy solid cam, obviously they're gonna give you a perfect post. You don't need to worry about this. But it got me thinking about something a lot of you asked me, and that's how you get ahead in this field. Well, honestly, it's just doing stuff like this. Spending your own time learning new technologies and mastering new things will get you to the top of this field. There's not as many people in your way as you might think. Between our academy, CNC Expert, and the upcoming Swiss Academy, you now have more resources than ever. So if you want to get your dream job, you could put in the extra effort and get there, no problem. So yeah, that's my little motivational speech. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and don't be stupid, ring that notifications bell. See ya! Ah!